I need uh, ATM, ATM, well, funny ATM, MasterCard Visa. Unfortunately, Visa MasterCard. BSG Bank? Yeah, this one, no good. So we've effectively gone round the panhandle, I suppose you could call it, of northeast Sulawesi. And we're now coming across the bottom. And uh, once again, beautiful scenery along the coastline. There's just one big difference, and that is, is that there are very few signs of civilization here. There's one uh, village up in the hills there, and I can see the odd one or two huts on the beach, and uh, of course, fishermen. But what this means is, is that we have no internet connection. Why should this matter? It should matter because we are struggling to get uh, weather forecasts. And uh, the deal here is that um, we have this southwesterly swell that's coming up. Anything that comes up Akaza Strait comes around the corner, as we saw when we were in Tolly Tolly. Then it comes across this way. And that's the weather that we just want to keep an eye on. So we're looking for an anchorage that gives us protection from uh, any westerly squalls that come through, but also this southwesterly swell. Yeah, we're kind of watching our phones, waiting for the bars to appear. Now, bars have appeared, but there's no sign of 4G, 3G, not even 2G. So, uh, yeah, we, we've managed to get a forecast yesterday, and we've got a rough idea of what's happening over the next day or so. After that, it's anyone's guess. Otherwise, we've just got a little bit of a breeze here, just enough to motor sail, and uh, just taking in this amazing scenery. Beautiful, always beautiful in Indonesia. First proper signs of life here. A uh, contingency of uh, small fishing boats and a couple of larger ones coming in. This is 10 miles into our passage and there's a little, um, I suppose you could describe it as a fjord, a little cut through into a big bay. Uh, no idea what the depths would be like, but uh, we could always duck in there if possible. But um, as usual, you know, very deep waters here, very few places to anchor, uh, especially with any kind of protection from this swell and uh, possible weather coming in but um, we'll just keep going for the moment and see how we get on. Well there continues to be more motoring and motor sailing than actual sailing but it's made up for with this incredible vista all the way along since we've left Bitung. Uh, just mountains and mountains and forests, some agriculture, beautiful coves, valleys with, with the morning mist just hanging in there. Uh, it really is a spectacular part of the world and there's hardly anyone here. We've hardly seen any other boats whatsoever. So this is Tomini Bay, I don't know how to pronounce it, T-O-M-I-N-I -I Bay, Tomini Bay. It's where the Togian Islands are, which is our destination this time round. And it's that uh, big bay at the top of Sulawesi, it just hangs underneath the northern part. Um, the travel literature tells you it's the most calm bay in the world. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, we'll find out. We've had a bit of weather through here so far and a little bit of swell. So maybe it's calm if you're a tourist going to a resort. But it is very, very pretty. This, uh, this, this island of Sulawesi, we are falling in love with, just absolutely adoring it. So we're coming to our next anchorage and we have an escort. There's quite a few fishing boats around here now. And in fact, where we're gonna try and anchor is a little bay, which on the satellite is showing a lot of spider boats at anchor. Uh, according to the charts, it's supposed to be anchorable, but hey, you just don't know, do you? So we're just gonna poke our noses in and uh, see what we can find.
Well, this is an interesting one. I thought we would be clever and get forward of these platforms. But it turns out these platforms are all med moored. So they've got an anchor line or two lines down the back running out to sea. But they also have a line running all the way forward. So even the ones at the, at the back here have got a long line and they run them to the mangroves. We didn't notice this until we actually went forward off them. Managed to get down to a respectable 20 metres. But, uh, you know, if we swing, uh, then uh, that's going to cause problems. Well, I haven't been doing much commentary on the last couple of trips. And that's really because I think I've been a little bit anxious partly because uh, this is uh, a new area but I think it's also because it's the the unknown of being uh, sailing around the tropics by the equator the um, winds the current uh, these are all unknown and um, really it's just been a case of picking our windows the last couple of anchorages have been really good but there has been this pretty strong southwesterly swell which is quite uncomfortable and when there's no wind and you're motoring into swell it's not very pleasant but we finally come to this great anchorage here, albeit in 30 metres of water. And you can see behind me the open sea there. It's pretty flat calm. We've got a reef behind us protecting us. So I'm hoping for the next two days that we're going to spend here, it should be good. But what I'm most excited about is that the forecast seems to be moving in our favour. Because if we stay here for two days, when we come to leave and head over to the Todian Islands, we could actually have some nice light wind southeasterly um, breeze pushing us along. So what I'm really hoping for is a nice sail with the code zero, which is here waiting to be used. Well, that would be great if we can sail, and it's 130 miles to our location, if we can sail that, even if it's at three knots. I don't mind. It would just be nice to get those sails out and just have a nice relaxing time rather than worrying about the engine. Well, I've just nipped ashore in the kayak. I looked on Google Maps and apparently there is an ATM here. We're a bit low on cash and unfortunately, uh, where we're going next, there are no ATMs on the Todjin Islands. So we're expected to pay cash for everything. And it's, uh, we're unsure if they actually have internet. So we're not even sure if we can actually pay by card, you know, using card machines. So I thought I'd just nip ashore and just see if I can try and get some cash out. Quite often these ATMs won't accept our cards. So it's a bit of a gamble. Um, but with uh, Liz doing the editing and it being quite flat at the moment, I thought I'd take this opportunity and have a quick look. Now this place here, I, f I flew the drone sort of looking this way. It's a very curious setup. I think it's some kind of government uh, complex where they have a temple, a mosque and a church representing the uh, three major religions here and uh, various government buildings. All looking very smart, but of course the village itself, which I think is called Bolsal, uh, around the corner is just your usual typical Indonesian town, uh, fishing village I suppose. So uh, I'll be interested to see what's here. It's hot, 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 hot today. And I've already found some locals, so I'm just taking a quick detour to say hello. Nama. Nama. Mar Marcus. 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 Yeah. Nama. Johnny. Johnny. Yeah. There we go. Marcus and Johnny. Easy names to remember. So they are Manching. 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 Sorry, Manching is fishing. So I think they probably live on these little. Or they work on these little fishing boats we've seen tied up here, and uh, they've told me there is an ATM here. If not. Then Johnny has, sorry, Marcus has very kindly said we can go on the scooter into town. So, terima Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, when I said there was a, a mosque, a church and a temple in the same area, they are all literally right next to each other. Right next door to each other. I've got uh, police over there. I'll show you these uh, rather splendid buildings. They all look quite new as well. Seems to be some kind of uh, army meeting going on on the steps of the mosque. A whole bunch of guys in uniform. Should we go and say hello? 
Try not to get arrested. Hello. How are you? Up a kebab. Oh, wait, wait. Good. Thank you. What are you? Army? Navy? Navy. 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 Oh. Navy. Good, good. 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 Me, uh, sailing. Oh, yeah. Prahu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where do you live? Sir. On the boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm happy to report that uh, when they found out I was English, the first thing they say is Liverpool. Of course, we uh, missed the quadruple, unfortunately. I talk like I'm an ardent Liverpool fan. I'm not. I mean, I am, but I'm not because we just don't really get to catch up on sports, unfortunately. Um, and uh, to be honest, I couldn't tell you who half the Liverpool team are anymore, but. It is a very useful way of breaking down barriers with people that you can't normally talk to, you know, via, via language. We were just joking, saying that uh, he knows as much English as I know Bahasa. So, so that's the mosque. And then right opposite here, you've got this rather splendid church. I mean, it's, the architecture of this is pretty bloody cool. Have a look at this. So, behind me, sacred cow next to the temple, although that's Buddhist, not Hindu. Don't confuse your religions. And here is, here is that church. It's uh, pretty impressive. And actually you get a nice view of the mosque as well with the sun on it. Anyway, that's as close as I'm gonna to get to the church. Uh, it's hot and uh, I don't wanna dehydrate. I need to get some, see if I can get some cash out. So I'm just gonna walk back up to the, uh, what I think is the ATM who, Two separate people have confirmed does exist. Well, I found the ATM kiosk. Bollocks. Uh, I think I might have to call on my new friend Johnny, no Marcus, for a lift into town. It's not very good, is it? Right. Apparently there is one, but it's up the hill towards this rather grand building, which again, I guess is uh, government. It's gotta be, isn't it? It's not privately owned, you stupid idiot. It's definitely government. <sighs> I've got to stop for another conversation now. Probably just as well. It's rather hot. Let's see what these guys are doing. Looks like a group of musicians have set themselves up. Let's go and see what they've got to say for themselves. Hello. Where do you do? Up a kebab. Oh. How are you? Hi. Come from? Nice. Yeah, yeah. Once again, once again. Once again. Liverpool. Yes. Yeah. Liverpool, yes? Good. Liverpool. Definitely Liverpool. There we go, Liverpool supporters, always good to see. I've got to go to the ATM. Okay, bye. Thank you. There go. <laughs> They're shouting out Liverpool player names, of which I can only remember about three these days. Right, keep marching upwards. This is turning into a bit of a mission, isn't it? Hello. How are you? Local police. Well, I found the ATM. Unfortunately, BSG Bank. I don't know this one. There's a high chance uh, it's not going to be able to take Visa or MasterCard. Let's have a look. Well, as I suspected, it doesn't take Visa or MasterCard, but the card in just says it's invalid. It's not the first time we've come across this problem. Oh, there is a lovely view though. It's a shame I'm on the GoPro. But up on top of this hill, I can see back out onto our anchorage. I can almost see Esper. Good, how are you? Video. Speak Indonesia? YouTube. YouTube. YouTube, yeah. YouTube. Say hello to YouTube. Say hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Uh, I need uh, ATM, ATM. Yeah, this one, no good. No, B B N I. Mastercard, Visa, Visa, Mastercard. 
Four kilometers. Fourteen. One four. Oh fuck. Right. Thank you, Terumakasi. Uh, I can't work out if it was four fourteen or forty. Let's uh, let's see what Marcus has to offer us. Oh look, here's the view. Hold on. Es Esbury's just tucked behind there. Well, even if I don't get any money, it's been a fun little discovery, hasn't it? Almost passed out getting to the top of that hill. That's disappointing. Marcus, the first of the two workers who I met here. I say workers because I think they're doing maintenance on this uh, building here. Anyway, he did offer to take me on the scooter into town, but uh, by the time I returned, he's uh, gone for lunch. He's probably actually gone to the mosque and then gone for something to eat, apparently, according to a young lad here, who I just woke up because I was very thirsty and asked if he had any water and he explained that the guys have gone off. So, Anyway, that's a bit of a shame. Um, so it looks like unless I kayak around the bay to the town itself, um, we're not going to get any cash. My, uh, my back is really playing up at the moment, so I need to be careful about what I can and can't do on the kayak, even uh, lifting things like the dinghy is a bit problematic at the moment, so I've just got to play it cool, play it safe. And it uh, looks like we're going to have to do some bartering when we get to the uh, Togian Islands. The anchorage itself, although we're anchored in 30 metres, is, is quite nice. There is a little reef kind of either side of the entrance, which gives us some kind of protection. We did get a bit of uh, southwesterly swell coming in, which uh, I expected. And that was created by an afternoon sea breeze. So it was just literally the heat off the land, sucking up the air and just pulling it towards land. But it, it was enough to create little bit of a swell um, which is you know it's not so much of a problem the main issue of course is being by these other uh, fishing platforms that have got lines everywhere so that's really my main concern but at the moment it's uh, it's pretty still and flat we've got a there's quite a bit of cloud building up on the horizon down south um, and then hopefully tomorrow we're going to have some uh, south easterlies and easterlies now they'll only be light but it could be enough to get the uh, Kraken out to do as much sailing as possible to the uh, Togian Islands.